SuperStream has just been introduced for retirement savings contributions. And ATO Program Manager SuperStream, Philip Hind, is with me today to tell us what it's all about for SMSFs. Welcome, Philip. Thank you. Welcome. So perhaps we can start by just going through what the SuperStream system is trying to achieve. Yeah, so SuperStream is about improving the efficiency of really the administrative side of superannuation. So you'll find that at the moment uh, the super system is quite complicated and requires a lot of manual effort and processes. Uh, the Cooper Review in 2010 identified up to a billion dollars worth of savings that could be made by reforming uh, the, the back office administration of superannuation. And so SuperStream is, is introducing that as a major change. It allows uh, contributions to be sent in electronic format, both data and payment, it requires all employers to do that, and all funds who are receiving that to receive it in that format. Okay, so what do SMSF trustees have to be aware of regarding the introduction of this system? So the first thing is they need to be aware that employers from the 1st of July 2014 uh, need to start getting ready to implement the new standard. Now we've allowed quite a lot of time for the implementation, but really uh, from this period onwards we're seeing the first introduction of the new standard. So what employers are doing are upgrading their payroll systems, collecting new information, getting ready, uh, in some cases beginning to send contributions in this new format. So for a trustee, what that means is they need to provide their employer with some additional information or check that they've got, that their employer's got the right information. So there's some important data that's required about an SMSF, including the uh, ABN, or Australian Business Number, um, of that fund, um, the bank account, and usually these two pieces of information most employers already have about their trustee, so it's not really new information. And the third new piece of information is an electronic service address which the trustee needs to provide to them. Now the importance of that particular uh, piece of information is that that is the sending address in electronic terms that an employer needs to use, needs to put in their payroll system or whoever it is that's, that's managing their contribution so that they can send that efficiently to a trustee. You combine those two things together, bank account, electronic service address, guarantees to a trustee they're going to get information deposited into their account with the right information electronically and on time. So should trustees have already done all of this? Um, those that are very diligent should have done it. Um, we wrote to all trustees associated with large and medium employers earlier this year and uh, urged them to um, get organised to do this. Of course, um, it's a very big sector. Uh, this is something new, so we're not surprised that not everybody has done it at this stage. And there is a staggered implementation of SuperStream. So I mentioned before large and medium employers. So their first cab off the rank. So any employer that has a business with 20 or more employees is in that first tranche of implementation. They've got until the 30th of June um, 2015 to complete that. So if you're in that group, if you're associated with an employer that's large or medium, you really need to be start thinking now about getting organised and get an electronic service address and get this information to your employer. If they haven't done anything up to date, is there any need for them to panic or anything like that? Certainly no need to panic. Um, the key thing from a compliance point of view, because the ATO um, not only is helping uh, facilitate and enable the implementation, ultimately we're the regulator of uh, the self-managed super funds sector as well. So there will come a time when we turn our attention to compliance matters, but at this point uh, we're just trying to make sure that from an education and support perspective, trustees understand their obligations, understand what they need to do. So in the absence of having done something at this point, the key thing to uh, focus on is make a plan, start making some inquiries, work out arrangements, find out when your employer plans to implement, uh, reach out to your advisor, your accountant or someone else who might be able to help you set up that electronic service address and you've still got time on your side but don't leave it to the last minute because there's bound to be um, issues with the last minute rush and better not to be in that position. 
Is there any onus on the SMSF trustee to liaise with the employer to make sure the employer systems are compliant? No, that's really an employer obligation. So if you go back to the core of the super uh, guarantee obligation in law, the employer is required to do all the things that are necessary to pay the right amount for super guarantee, to pay it on time. And now really what the, the new super stream standard does is it makes clear to an employer it must be an electronic format, it must their payment must be electronic and there are certain other requirements. So all of that firmly rests with with the employer as an obligation, not the trustee. The trustee uh, obligations can really be thought as falling uh, into two categories. If you were just starting up an SMSF today, then in order to do that, apart from setting up an SMSF um, trust arrangement, you would need to complete a choice uh, form and give that to your employer. Now, the new choice form, which has recently been published, has on it the relevant uh, fields that you need to complete with your bank account and Mm -hmm. electronic service address. So anybody who's entering um, the SMS sector, fast-growing, rapid-growing sector that it is, will find that this is kind of a normal course of business of getting started. And, of course, this is only something you have to do once. You don't have to keep doing it. So you set yourself up, let your employer know, and away you go. But if you're already in the um, already operating as a self-managed super fund, uh, this is a one-off thing that you need to go back and, and, and get organised on. Um, so that's really the primary obligation is to have that receiving capability if for whatever reason the employer fails to send it in the right format, you'll still get your contribution, but you might have to receive a cheque or it you know, it might come a bit later than if, mm. if the employer was really well organised because there are some significant benefits that trustees might necessarily see up front that, that come with this change. So it is desirable, um, but it will take some time to settle down. Now, Philip. A little bit earlier, you mentioned compliance and Mm -hmm. and the ATA's attitude towards this. At what point in time does it stop being an educational exercise and you would really like everybody to fall into line with the new system? Sure. So I mentioned the uh, staggered or phased rollout. So large and medium employers have up until, you know, a tolerance up until 30th of June 2015 to provide this information to their employer. Small business, if you're associated with a small business, so that's under the 20 employees threshold, you have another year, so up until 30th of June 2016. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, so the the ATO will, of course, start turning its mind to compliance post-2015 as far as Mm -hmm. trustees that might be associated with large and medium employers. I think in the first instance, our approach would simply be, you know, gentle reminders to people pointing out the possible consequences of not complying because there are sanctions that, that can be applied uh, and, and just trying to make sure that people understand that um, they could could face some action. So there's going to be some gentle nudging um, and, and then it will you know, possibly become firmer action after that. Okay, fantastic. Thanks very much for your time today. Yeah, for my pleasure. Thank you.